Facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond trip young and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell a boss. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out, bro. Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Uh, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans. Real talk, real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. What's going on? Welcome back to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. We got a whole lot to get into this week. Uh, plus, we got the fellas from Sneaker Ball, one of the sponsors of the first ever dunk contest going down at this year's Balling for Peace. Joining us a little bit later, Ladybug will be here as well for all you Rumor Mill fans. And, of course, we got the ball back. Shout out to Leanne back there behind the bar keeping the drinks cold. But uh, before we jump into all that, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Mark the Statman Skevich. What's going on? Great to be back for another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. A lot going on in the world of sports. Uh, baseball is back, NBA and NHL playoffs around the corner. Uh, before we get into all that, though, we got Mr. A Game of Thrones himself, uh, legend in two games, Eric Sanchez. Thank you. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy that stat, man, you know, you give me my respect this week, stat, man. Now you can be the regular, you know, you're not the regular, you know, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Last week, <laughs> But I'm, but I'm back now. Nah, I'm happy, man. We got a lot to get into today, man. A lot to get into. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> regular, regular Eric because you're the regular Eric on the show. Like, the, you know, the usual Eric. That nah, doesn't mean you're not, you know, know low average. Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm busting your chops. But, uh, big shout out to Eric Barkley. He pulled up on us uh, last week. Uh, if you guys missed last week's episode, you can definitely hit up the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. You can check out the full interview with Eric Barkley. It's up already. And uh, also, you guys can check out that Big Gene interview. You know, that was the exclusive straight to YouTube just for our fans that have been rocking with us. So make sure y'all subscribe to that channel as well. But uh, we definitely got a whole a lot of sports to get into uh, this week. And uh, fellas? Yeah, I mean, well... <laughs> But like I said at the top of the program, baseball's back. Uh, last night, yesterday, I should say, Giancarlo Stanton, uh, Sanchez, and Judge all hitting a home run in the same game. That's the first time I of mean, many times this yes, season it's, it's we should be happen. seeing that. It's definitely going to happen. Stanton got his first one in the stadium because uh, the first game of the season he got one, but uh, the first time, the, the first one in Yankee Stadium yeah. was yesterday. And, uh, you know, looks like the Bronx Bombers are definitely uh, bombing out there. So. Yeah, I think they they finally ready to take over that uh, Legion of Boom title from the Seattle Seahawks because we know that that whole pack is gone. Sherman's out of there. Bennett's out of there. Walter Thurman's retired. Uh, so the new Legion of Boom is in the Bronx, and uh, they definitely uh, are looking pretty good this season. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, you know, Stan got booed the, the first uh, day, opening that's, day. That's typical Yankee <laughs> the whole right there. We had to, listen, we had to give him that welcome and let him know, this is this is the Yankees, man. Don't come up in here and think you're going to stink up the joint. You got to represent all that money we paying you. You got to do your thing. Yeah, he definitely looked <laughs> really bad in that home opener. But <laughs> that man said, it's going to be the first of many nights that they, uh, as a trio, go deep. Um, it's just too tough to pitch to them. And then if you are able, if you're lucky enough to get those guys out, then Didi will hit two home runs and get eight RBIs. So it's, it's kind of... <laughs> exactly. Might have, might have a fantastic four. We're all yeah. four of them knock home runs. And, and yeah. wait till Greg Bird comes back. You know, that gives you another guy in that lineup as well. So they, they're stacked, man. That's, they got a lot of talent in that lineup. Moving you in this. And, 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 and Eric... The Mets are doing well. They just start off hot as well. Well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not one to brag. I'm very humble when it comes to that type of stuff, you know. Because uh, you also know they fall apart and you don't want to. No, I, I, because I, I told you guys from jump that, um, you know, as long as the Mets are healthy, they're going to be a contender. Um, so they look healthy. Cespedes said himself that this team was better than the 2015 team that went to the World Series. 
And he would know because he was a big part of that team that went to the World Series. Yeah, and I think I'm going to definitely need a drink today. So as long as they're healthy. Skin, all right. Leanne, let's get some cel celebratory <laughs> drinks around the house, you know, because <laughs> Mets look good. Yankees are off to a hot start, yes. you know. It's good. You know what? It's good, you know, like one one day, stat man, when you're able to say, like, good things about Thank the you. Knicks, I'll be happy for you as well. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I will genuinely uh, uh, be happy for you. Just on that note, stat man's going to need a, <laughs> more than one drink for that, but. <laughs> The, no, he just said the take the, No, no, no. But I'm saying, I, I got my water. I'm good here. But we're gonna need something stronger than that if we start talking about the Knicks. Yeah, definitely. We know it's a bad scene over there. Definitely will. I will say well, I mean, it, it's at the point now where I'm hoping that they lose and don't. Yeah. you know, so, they're actually doing so, a good job of tanking this season. Yeah. If, I, if I might, you know, I mean, been tanking say for that. like three months now. Yeah, they've been they've been doing well in that department. Ever since the Porzingis injury happened, it's mm -hmm. you know you got to lose everything from that point yeah. on. I mean, we don't want any of those W's there with the Knicks. Exactly. So, <laughs> there, there you go. What's next on the dock? <laughs> <laughs> well, but, so, since we're on the subject of basketball, we'll take a fan mail question. Uh, Carl from New Haven wrote in, which top three seed is most likely to get upset in the first round of the playoffs? Um, either conference? Or we? Well, either this? conference. You know, uh, I'm going to say the Celtics. Uh, Kyrie Irving out for the whole playoffs. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, the Blazers on the west side, if, if, if you know, we're going, uh, you know, per conference, but I think the biggest uh, would be would, would be the, uh, the Celtics with Kyrie because Kyrie's out. Yeah, I think that's pretty much over now. Once I saw that news, I, I think it was over for them. Um, you might also have the Sixers if they jump ab above the Cavaliers, but, yeah. you know, still I think. And they're still playing well even with Joel Embiid yeah. out. Ben Simmons is definitely taking it to a whole other level. Um, on the West, though, it, if I'm going to give you an upset that would be the, actually the biggest upset, and that's uh, if, if Minnesota State. plays go yeah plays Golden State in that first round, and they have a full uh, roster with Jimmy Butler coming back, and he's supposed to be back before the start of the playoffs, and they don't have Steph, that could be a potential upset right there. Well, I uh, no, I don't. I don't see the Minnesota one. We had the convo, but I do. Even before Kyrie was done for the season, I thought Boston was very vulnerable, yeah. and I didn't like the the matchup of them having to play Miami. I think Miami could have beat them even with Kyrie. Mm -hmm. So without Kyrie now, if they have to play Miami, that's a done deal. If they play Milwaukee, they're probably going to get bumped as well. Uh, so you Boston. think even with Kyrie, that Boston would be the the yeah. They struggle to score. They str I mean, even yeah. with Kyrie, he, he has to bail them out a lot of times because the rest of the offense just isn't up to par. So, you know, they got a lot of young guys they got to rely on. They really don't have a post presence. Everything is perimeter-based with, with the Celtics. Yeah. And Miami, they would have been like the perfect matchup for them. Miami going against them with their defense, interior and perimeter, they would have gave them fits. Might see that old flashback for, for a little bit in the playoffs in, in limited minutes. Dwayne Wade gonna yeah. definitely make some noise in the playoffs. I don't know about Whiteside though, because Whiteside he been acting up lately, complaining about his minutes, and he hasn't been playing too well. But I think he'll do good in the playoffs though. Yeah, I just think that the the team itself. I mean, against Boston anyway. Yeah, against Boston, anything. it's like the perfect matchup yeah. because Miami plays this rugged style with physical defenders. So they would have really suffocated them. They would have forced Kyrie that Kyrie would have had to drop thirty five every night on Miami for yeah. Boston to win that series. You know, so they, they just didn't have the pieces. And it's un unfortunate because on paper to start the season, it looked really good with him and Hayward and the young guys. Yeah. But now they'll... Well, yeah. On paper, they, there's always next year. Cause yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on paper, they That's were. That's definitely what it's going to be. Irving both back for next year, hopefully, unless they get injured again. Yeah. But uh, Toronto beat the Celtics last night. Mm -hmm. um, comfortable lead there in first place. What do you? Th is Toronto a legitimate threat for the Cavaliers? No. Not at all. This is over for that. Just give that up. That realistically, that went out the window. The last game when they gave up that lead and LeBron had that seventeen assists, zero turnover game. That was out the window then. But last night, uh, you know, Kyle, the other night rather, Kyle Lowry thought it was uh, good. You know, better for him to go watch Villanova play in the championship game than to stay with his team. And then he had his worst game of the year. And um, so, but I don't think they can do anything with the Cavs because once you put somebody on DeRozan and, and Lowry, like that's pretty much it for Toronto. Like, they're going with Van Fleet. That's 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 all they got left on offensive yeah, it's, head. Like it's a shame because Toronto's actually, when you watch them play, they they're actually a little better than they've been in previous years because they shoot the three ball better now. Yeah. But I don't know what it is like when they play the Cavs. Like 
Tripp said two two games ago when they played, they blow the 15 point lead at half. The other night, like you know, Cleveland's just doing whatever they want against them. And Maybe it's it's their, you know, ma make the Cavs feel comfortable by losing in the regular season and then yeah. show yeah. every you game. You keep throwing out these wild strategies. Good job, good job. You keep and the yeah. Knicks will be in the uh, finals let's, this year too. Let's let the Cavs beat up on us because <laughs> it's not like they haven't done it the last couple of playoffs as well. Like, yeah. Toronto, I mean, Toronto's probably the, the biggest threat at this point because who else in the East could really put up a fight against the Cavs in the series? Honestly, I think the biggest threat to the Cavs is the 76ers just nah. because of because of Joel Embiid. Yeah, but the Sixers they are wouldn't, They wouldn't, you know, the way it's set with, you know, the Cavs at three and them at four, even yeah. if they would reverse that, they wouldn't play each other until the, the Eastern, the Conference, Eastern Finals, Conference Finals and the 76ers would have to put in some work to make that happen and that's a young team so yeah, no playoff experience. Young team, no playoff experience and as good as Ben Simmons is, I guarantee you come playoff time, everyone is going to clog the paint and force yeah. him to shoot a mid-range jump shot and if he can't knock down at least a mid-range, they're going to struggle. Well, because we know he can't hit the three, so yeah, he don't even try to take it. No, so that's gonna easily be the game plan come playoff time. Just yeah. clog the paint up, force you. If now, if, if Reddick can go off, if uh, Covington can go off from three and force you to have to play out there, and maybe create a little bit more space. But they're just gonna clog the lane. They're gonna force Ben Simmons shoot the jump shot. And if you can't make it consistently, either you're gonna have to come off the floor or you're playing five on four. Well, he can't come off the floor because they need him too much because everything playing, else that he does. Then you're playing five on four. Because he, he's he'll become an inefficient offensive player at that point. I just want to see what the Bucks are going to do. Actually, I want to see how they're going to do in the playoffs. If if Jabari Parker can act, play close to what he was playing last year before he got hurt, I think that they could actually do well in this playoffs because of uh, the injuries that's going on right now in the Eastern Conference. But he hasn't played up to what what he uh, what I I believe he can be. He hasn't played up to that this season, so we kind of got to see on that one. But maybe come playoff time, maybe he'll be in his groove, and he'll do something. But right now, I don't know. You mentioned the Bucks, but we had the fan mail question from Carl. Just want to thank him for writing in. Our email address is fanmail at realfansrealtalk.com. I'll also make sure you like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. Twitter and Instagram at Real Fan Talk. Of course, all our social media, archived episodes, blogs, and everything are on the Real Fans Real Talk dot com website. Make sure you check that out. So the fan mail question was the top threes um, in the league. But what about you know you mentioned the Bucks? What uh, what four seed and lower in either conference do you think will make the most noise? Uh. I, I I mean I still I still think it's the Timberwolves, but that's just solely based on the fact that Steph Curry uh, may not be there for that uh, first round series. Um, but other than that, I don't really see too many of the bottom half doing making too much. So I think it's pretty much going to be the top seeds that are going to take it. So well, except for the the Boston series, but that's I mean just because nobody's there right now. Yeah, so I I definitely believe Boston's out early. The West is tough because I, I don't – Houston should win their first-round matchup, and Golden State has enough talent to at least get out of the first round without Steph. Um, depending on the, how the seedings work, like the other day, the matchup that really caught my eye would have been Portland and Oklahoma City because mm -hmm. I really think Oklahoma City is one of the teams that's just kind of baiting their time, and they know that their season really begins in the playoffs. Yeah, Nothing that takes place in the regular season is going to do anything for them. They didn't put this team together to be a regular season team. So they are the team that I think presents probably the most matchup problems for anybody else if they're on their game because they have the interior defender with Adams, George, and Russell can each carry you for a series if you get anything from Melo. Yeah. If he looks, you know, if he's halfway decent. Because <laughs> he's been horrible. Yeah, he's been terrible like the last month. Yeah. If he's halfway decent, they are probably the scariest team to Houston and Golden State in the West because they have enough weapons and they've got a pretty solid defense. George is probably going to be in the running for defensive player of the year. Adams yeah. always patrols the paint really well. Corey Brewer gives him another perimeter defender. Their bench is terrible, but yeah. their five could carry them. Yeah, especially in, in the first round. Absolutely. As you go deeper yeah. in, the, in the playoffs. Yeah, they, they could be Portland in the series. It, it does depend on seeding because if they're the six or the five seed, I think, you know, the Thunder uh, yeah. w would be that team. But, Correct. you know, on the other side, 
if the Sixers move up to three, which would technically not make them, you know, a four anymore, and it wouldn't really count, but if they could move up to three, I think they have a good chance of making it to the Eastern Conference Finals because they won't have to play the Cavs or Toronto uh, until yeah, until the, the finals. finals. Yeah. yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, they, they could make some noise. Like I said, my only concern with the Sixers is Ben Simmons being able to score outside of the paint, but they can definitely make some noise yeah. if they you know if they get a, a good matchup in that first round. They just gonna need guys like JJ Redick and uh, Covington to step yeah. up, and I think they'll be they'll be good to go. All right, uh, moving along, we're going over to boxing. The tainted meat saga continues Pulse. as as Canelo Alvarez <laughs> uh, withdraws from the Triple G match. I mean. We'll probably have it again eventually, um, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. I mean, it's a big fight. Fans were looking forward to seeing it again, but it's, you know, it uh, doesn't look like it's happening as of right now. But, it's, I mean, I, it's, realistically, it's the best thing because, I mean, clearly we can't have that. you up here juicing and trying to get into the ring. So, I mean, he did what was the, the best thing in the situation. But even though, well, the better thing would have been not to use whatever he used in the first place. But, yeah, they'll, they'll get a replacement fighter because uh, Triple G definitely wants to fight still on that date. And then hopefully we can get that uh, Danny Jacobs rematch uh, later on this year. Uh, so I guess around September, October, we can, we can get that fight going. But, I mean, it's, it's crazy. We've been talking about this the past couple of weeks because, you know, we had a couple of boxers on the show. It's, it's it's just sucks, you know. But I mean, I don't know, man. It's De La Hoya's yeah. <laughs> work. So, so what can I say, man? It's De La Hoya. Yes, yeah, so this is just absolutely ridiculous because one, uh, Canelo has used or has had a personal chef in the past, right? When we've seen him on Total Access and leading up to other fights, when he's normally training in California, he has the personal chef. So this talk of oh, we were in Mexico, so we didn't have the personal chef, and somehow the tainted meat. Like, it's nonsense. You knew what you were doing. Right? And he's not the first athlete in Mexico who's had to deal with this. So you know there's a history already there. So why would you even chance it? Yeah. Why would you even chance it? Um, but it, it kills it now because the only good thing that comes out of him coming out of the fight now is that the Nevada Athletic Commission is probably going to show a little leniency and they'll reduce his suspension to six months. He'll be yeah. back to fight sooner as opposed to being suspended for a year. And maybe we get to see this fight at the end of the year. But... As you mentioned, Danny Jacobs has been waiting. Danny Jacobs was supposed to get the winner of the first fight. Yeah. And because it was a draw, Danny Jacobs has had to wait. And Jan Danny yeah. Jacobs legit won he, beat, he in has, my opinion. He fought Triple G the best out of anyone who's been yeah. in the ring with him. So this is a guy who's been waiting already over a year for his including rematch. Canelo. Yeah. <laughs> including Canelo. Yeah, including Canelo. So he's been waiting already over a year for his rematch, and now he's got to wait longer. Yeah. Because he wants to take another fight. And, then now and it is De La Hoya's fault. Of course. It's, it's always De La Hoya's fault because anytime you pose <laughs> and fishnet that. stockings in your fighting stance, it's got to be your fault. Exactly. So this, it is. It's De La Hoya, it's always no way, De La Hoya's fault. That's what it goes no back to. There's no way around that. It's just it's, it's all on you. That's De it. La Hoya. That's it. Until you talk about the, the pictures in question, it's still your fault. doesn't matter. Exactly. Well... Not sure too much of the relevancy yeah. on that, but I think he's gonna get shots it taken the, on him for the a long time. The relevancy because of was that. with the uh, that stuff they found uh, that girl doing in Odell Beckham's hotel. Room. That's that's another video. No one <laughs> wants to talk about it. Yeah, that was the that was the the connection. There. Nobody wants to talk about that either. But uh, you know, what, what are you gonna do, man? And, um, so we so we might have either. Danny Jacobs or Canelo fighting Triple G at the end of the year. Danny Jacobs yeah. is fighting later this I'd, month. I'd make Canelo wait till next year, even if you know. what I'm saying once he once he gets the suspension and, and he's back, I still make. Even, him even wait. though Danny Jacobs doesn't Danny have the Jacobs. bigger name, he's still uh, you know you know he, he better fight. He, he, I mean, he at least fought Triple G better. Yeah, as, as Eric mentioned, but it's, it's the business side of it, and that's why I don't like Delahoy because Delahoy is so quick to speak out on how other boxers handle their business. Yeah, but he's done the same thing with Canelo. Yeah, Canelo had no business fighting Amir Khan a few years ago, but yet he you know he propped that up as the fight, even though yeah. Triple G had Triple G waited two years to fight Canelo. Now you fight, you have a controversial draw. And now he's got to wait again because of yeah. tainted meat? Come on, man. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> oh, but, man. 
Well, can we can we jump to the to the heavyweight <laughs> heavyweight division really we, quick? Because we do we, we got about our uh, sneaker ball family in the building too. So let's get to this heavyweight fight really quick. So speaking of fights that might happen later this year, the Deontay Wilder Joshua fight might have happen at the end of this year, and I mean. That's the fight I've personally been waiting for. I think it's kind of the re return of the heavyweight division finally mm -hmm. uh, with the big you know, heavyweight matchup that I'm, I'm looking forward to because, let's face it, I mean, when was the last time we seen anything? anything I mean, number yeah. one, the fact that it's a unification fight, that in itself is, is tremendous. But just competition-wise, how these guys match up, I haven't seen anything. I mean, unless, yeah. is there anything you guys could think and of in the past division. decade? No. Nah. Um, I mean, I spoke about it in, uh, in, in my last vlog, but I, th I think it's probably going to be the biggest heavyweight fight since maybe Tyson Holyfield, just because there's nothing left and we haven't seen a good heavyweight <laughs> matchup in like 10, 15 years yeah, the anyway. Yeah, the Klitschko's kind of dominated didn't really for have so any, long. There wasn't nobody. Yeah, they but was, they ruined the division anyway because, yeah. you know, one brother had a majority of the belts, the other brother had and a belt. And they wouldn't fight each other. They were never going to fight each other, so... It was just got kind of crazy. So this fight is going to be the fight. Um, I mean, I'm go I'm still going with with, with Deontay. Got to go with the with the home team. But um, it's just uh, you know, and I, I mentioned this. What's going to happen is they're going one. They're going to fight fight over that the the purse split, and then they're going to fight over the location. I'm glad that uh, um, Deontay said that he doesn't mind going over to the UK to fight because I think that'll make the fight happen a lot sooner. And yeah. now they just have to worry about how they're going to split the fight purse because I I. Definitely do not see Anthony Joshua coming to the U.S. to fight Deontay Wilder because I just think he has no chance whatsoever if he comes in. I think he knows that, so he's going to be smart and petition to make sure that the fight is over in the U.K. Yeah, um, I'm definitely looking forward to it because I agree. There hasn't been a fight like this in a heavyweight division in quite some time. And because both of these guys are young, it could potentially become that big rivalry, rivalry yeah. within the heavyweight division. Uh, I would go with Deontay as well. Um uh, Dante, you know, I, I think he's the better fighter. He's not an overly skilled boxer, but he's the better fighter overall. And I think Joshua just hasn't really fought anybody either. And that, that right hand is going to be crazy. Yeah. So, so, so it goes down in the U.K., or do you think they're going to No, it's definitely going to go down. He won't, he won't fight. I think, I'm not saying the U.S., him. but, you know, a neutral ground, another oh, country no. in nah, Europe. I think, or, gonna, be I think U.K., if anything. Wilder's they're smart in that sense, too. Because now you force his hand, like, all right, now I'm willing to come to you, so there's yeah. no excuse. Exactly. So I come to you, and then I handle my business over there, and now you got to come back over now, here. Yeah, you now want. you got to come to the U.S. if you want to rematch. Yeah. Now it's over. Yeah, you yeah. got to come here. I just, I really don't. Like, I, you know, a lot of times when you have the European fight, especially once they have the belt, they're not trying to come yeah. over to the United States to fight. You know, I, and not like I said, I don't want to say it's because they're scared. I'll just say it's this smart. They know what it is. They're not coming over here to, to fight the top American fighters in the United States. It's just they don't want to do it. All right. Leads to our fan mail question before we bring our guests up. Uh, Jimmy from Queens wrote in, what are your thoughts on Deontay Wilder saying he wants to catch a body in the ring? Well, number one, it kind of contradicts, <laughs> kind of contradicts what uh, the interview Real Fans Real Talk had with him. How he he basically said that you know he hopes that you know the the other fighters okay and goes back to their family and all that stuff. I mean, well, that's what he said uh, with us. But in in his but, defense, we were talking to Deontay Wilder, yeah. and I watched the interview that uh, that he did with 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 the, with the Breakfast Club, and he said that's how. The bronze bomber feels. He didn't say that. Yeah. He said Deontay Wilder would feel bad if somebody died in the ring. But he said the bronze bomber trying to catch a body. So I, I'm not mad at him. Like, listen, at the end of the day, if you going in that ring, one, I mean, the fighters sign waivers anyway. But you basically are putting your your life on the line and your your livelihood. So if you going in there, was, listen. The best way for me to win that fight is to know you can't come back at me. Now, granted, I don't want anybody to die in the ring either. But if you if you don't get up, then Clearly, that's it. The fight is over. I don't even know why we're surprised by him saying this. <laughs> a, a fighter is wired differently mentally. You know, <laughs> mentally, it's, it's just completely different. Mm -hmm. You go in the ring, and it's, that man is trying to hurt you. 
and he doesn't but you care. Know, we live in a so sensitive he, he, he day. Ivan yeah, if he dies, he dies. He dies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's basically <laughs> what break. it is. Yeah. yeah, I don't like. What do we expect of him? Nah, you know, I just want to go in there and I just give him a couple love it. taps, nah. and that's it. It's, you know, it's over. One of us go not, home with the belts. Actually, not at that weight. <laughs> yeah, nah. There's no nah, not with with, with uh, Deontay's right. I mean. You know, myself and the staff man were at the Barclays Center when he fought Spilker, and that one got really bad. Yeah, he uh, he said he <laughs> thought he caught a body with him. Yeah. He wasn't breathing when he uh, he, he wasn't when he went down. You know, we were in the stairs looking like, yo, they calling the ambulance right now. This is not but, good. Like, we get surprised when we hear these. Like, Mike Tyson told somebody, "I want to eat your kids." <laughs> exactly. I well, remember seeing Mike Tyson as a kid. After I forgot who it was that he knocked out, and he was like, "Oh, he was in the <laughs> ring making all those girly noises when I was hitting him." Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's not the same. He's not yeah. right, right here. <laughs> Plus, he don't listen to his own voice when yeah. he says. Yeah. So. <laughs> We've seen fighters say these things before. Like, that's a fact. Is it gonna stop anybody from tuning in? No, because this is going to. It's gonna make them tune in more. But that's the yeah. thing, and you know, you know, maybe whether he really feels that or not is a different story. But yeah. what. It, whether he does or doesn't you have the fear factor component of it like this guy wants to kill me like you know whatever i mean well i don't think joshua or any of the other fighters really will think too much of it but no because they're know, going in there with that same yeah, mentality yeah, like, whether he yeah. says it out loud or not might be different but yeah My, I'm mike tyson in. had that fear factor in, in him yeah. too like you know so i mean some fighters will be intimidated yeah. by deontay while there's no question about that especially if he's talking about how he wants to kill somebody like exactly we, but and, and we'll still keep tuning in we're we gonna we're gonna definitely just like how ivan drago <laughs> put watch, yeah. <laughs> exactly we, rocky we still watch wait for yeah we, we still watch time. rocky i know apollo with the rocky die, fight after that watch exactly <laughs> <laughs> still gonna watch it it's all good man but um we are we're we gonna get we're getting back to our charity tour once again and uh of course you guys know uh the next stop on our charity tour is going to be the balling for peace basketball game uh big shout out to haran uh they're gonna be back at elm Corps recreational center in queens once again this year but of course the first ever dunk contest at Bowling for Peace is going down as well at the halftime during the charity game. Of course, that is being sponsored by Real Fans Real Talk, but we also have a team of sponsors as well. One of those sponsors is Sneaker Bar. It's one of the dopest sneaker stores in the Bronx. They got all the exclusive kicks. Even though they didn't have my size last time I was up in there, so I'm, you know, I'm going back. I got to get me something up out of there. But um, we're going to check out some of the, uh, the guys that submitted dunk videos really quick. And when we come back, we're going to have the guys from Sneaker Bar join us on the set. It's Will Martin from the Devon Nuggets. We live kicking it at Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk dot com. The Arthur Diamond trip young and intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Asian to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the cat. <laughs>
Facebook.com Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan What's going on? Welcome back That was some of the, the guys that submitted for the dunk contest The first ever dunk contest is going down at this year's Bowling for Peace, April 21st Courtesy of yours truly, Real Fans Real Talk. But uh, we don't just come by ourselves. We like to bring our friends out, you know, when we having these kinds of, of events. Um, you know, so we went out and we said, how can we make the dunk contest a little bit better? And that's by giving away some prizes. So we went out. Uh, sneaker bars, they, they, they up by me in the Bronx. And I always pass the store. I was, you know, we stopped in, myself and Eric, one day said, let's see what they got. And we was like, oh, they got some stuff up in there. All right, I could kind of rock with them. We asked if they would like to be a part of the event. They jump right on it. They, I guess, they on their charity run too with us. <laughs> and gentlemen, welcome to Real Fans Real Talk. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. Shout out to Sneaker Bar, but we got our own bar here, and uh, it's only appropriate uh, if you guys we also would like talk. an adult <laughs> beverage. <laughs> <laughs> more than welcome to. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Leanne, could you please take care of our guests? Thank you. Well, can't decline the offer, you know. Right? Yeah, listen, just, man, that's, you know we're trying to be hospitable, you yeah, know. Yeah, man. You, you're in the man cave right you. now, <laughs> so we got to be hospitable. <laughs> that's all it is. But uh, we definitely going to start over here. All right. Lead us in about Sneaker Ball. How long y'all been around? Well, Tell us. Yeah, introduce uh, yourself thank to you. people. Let the people know who you are. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, my name is Darnell, Darnell Crockett. Um, Got a sneaker store in the Bronx by the name of Sneaker Ball. It's located on 762 East 149th Street. Um, a little bit by my area, South Bronx, right there. Um, basically, we've been open since. Not Sobro, because I know they changed it to Sobro, so it's not just mm, to make sure. Nah, it's nah, nah. We still address We still got South Bronx, yeah. <laughs> South Bronx, always and forever. Okay. Um, we're going on six years, actually, this month. April 28th will be our, our six year open. Um, right now, we're doing our thing on social media. Um, you can follow us on Sneaker Ball. On Instagram, it's at Sneaker Ball. we on. Facebook at Sneaker Bar New York, Twitter Sneaker Bar NY. Um, right now we got over 994k followers, so we are doing our thing right now. We trying to just keep keep it going, and uh, can't wait to be a part of this event. Now, did you get to, uh, the the all black nines for me? Oh, it's like nine and a half. Ten, ten and a half. Ten? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I wish you would have me. I got Come a ten on, and a half. Come on, man. That's what I be today. talking about, man. I needed something to <laughs> yeah. wear for Bowling for Peace. We'll figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Introduce yourself, man. What's going on, everybody? I go by the name Treble. Like the music, no, you know, but it's spelled differently. It's T-R-B-L-E. Um, I'm a rapper, artist, producer. I do everything art. You feel me? That's what's up. How you doing? My name is Nuve. I'm a singer-songwriter. Rapper. So as we can see, Sneaker Bar, obviously, right. you're a businessman, but you're branching out as well. You got your yeah, artist trying, with you. Yeah, I'm trying to do my thing. These are my brothers, and I'm, they into music, stuff like that. Um, so hopefully, look for a way we all can come up together. Well, music and, you know, fashion kind of go hand in hand anyway. Right. And all the rappers, you got to have a new, fresh sneaker, so why not go to Sneaker Bar right, exactly. and get those when you're coming out exactly. and, uh, and get, there, get you a pair of something. They right, had everything. Yes. We also have our, our clothing line we got coming up right now, too. Um, I got some sweaters for you guys, too, at the end of the show. See, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking that, about, yeah, man. Yeah, it's cool. Yes, you can come back anytime you know before what? you come yeah, with yeah, this, man. Just get the, you know, just get the bottle. I'm a size 12, too. I got the bottle right there. Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> How long you guys have been doing music together? Um, let y'all guys say that. So I've been doing music since 2010. Um, took a little break with it just to focus on real life experience and whatnot. But then um, last last year, you know, around October time, that's when I got back into it. I dropped the project, The Lost Baker. It's on all media platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Title. You know, trying to hit numbers with that, and then um, just continually get better. So I've been doing nothing but shows. Oh, that's what it is. I've been doing music for about two and a half years now. Started late November in 2015. And um, I released my first single, Black Friday, last year, called Black Snow. Now available on also uh, streaming platforms. Did you release it on Black Friday? Yeah. 
Did y'all have Friday. a sale on Black Friday over at Sneaker Bar? Yeah, we had, we had some sale. Because y'all could have combined that right there. You know, you get an album with the sneakers or something <laughs> like that. And, uh, you got to cross promote, man. Come on. Yeah, bro, we still going, so um, thanks for the idea. We, we, I, it's so me my copyright on that there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, we, we, we still new to it. Okay. Same, so we, we trying to, like, go together. Every way possible. No, that's See good. See where it takes us. And uh, we definitely appreciate you stepping up to the plate um, as far as with the helping out with the with the charity event and whatnot. Like that was a dope, cause you know everybody is not gonna be like, oh yeah, we'll donate something, cause you know people just yeah, be right. cheap and they don't yeah. want to spread the love, you know. But it's yeah. you know when it's for a good cause, it's always good to have you know guys stepping up and just doing their part. So we definitely you know appreciate you guys jumping right in with that. No How problem. do you guys know each other? How do you? <laughs> Yeah, so Darnell and whatnot, me and him, we went to middle school together. Uh-huh. Knew the kids since like fifth grade, best friend ever since, you feel me? Yeah. Did everything together music, dance, fashion. That's who I started the line with, SB and Co. and whatnot. This is with this guy right here. Right, that's actually one of my Okay, this, this is this is the fashion yeah. line that yeah, this is the line we got on. Um, so far, we got uh, six, three shirts. And three sweaters. Um, Can y'all get a good shot of that on the uh, on the camera over here? They yeah, actually have something on the back as well. It's a pot on. And when did you guys decide you want to get together and start Sneaker Bar? Sneaker Bar. Well, actually, Sneaker Bar was started by one of my other friends. Um, mm-hmm. His name is Kevin. Um, but it's in my area where I grew up at. Uh-huh. So just be I've always been in the sneakers, like since I was a little kid. That's that's like my life. That's my one of my main hobbies. So it was just like being having a store in my neighborhood, you know, I just started going in, and then after a while you start networking and you start building relationships, and I just got on board like that. I've I've been around the store since it opened up, but I officially came on board on the store in, in October 2016. Okay. So yeah. Now you guys, you mentioned, it sounds like the, the music thing like recently came into your life, right? Yeah, more yeah. so, yeah. So like what, what really brought that out? Like what were some of the uh, influences that made you say, oh, I want to really go hard at this? It was just um, seeing everybody do it and then knowing you can do it, but do it better. Like you can bring your ideas forth, do it a whole totally different way, you know, bring the positivity and the love into the game and whatnot bring that soulful element, for lack of better words, you know, back into the game. And so, it was like now or never. I so like you're basically that, saying like you feel the game is trash. It's cool. You <laughs> know, <laughs> I mean, that's how you feel. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. Hold on, guys. Yeah, we're we going to see right now. You ain't got to say no specific names, but you can no, say. No, it's not trash. It's just. Well, who's in your top five right now? In the game right now? Yeah, right now. If you if you want to just be like, all right, we're not gonna count Jay because Jay is like, hey, Jay, you know, elite status. He's OG retired. You can get us five outside of Jay. Are we counting Jay too, or is Jay like retired now? No, he can't yeah, put out another album. Let's count Jay. Yeah, I think he can. can, can, can say, I'm gonna say Jay. I would say Jay. Um, Jay, Travis Scott, Bruno, ooh, Drake, Big Sean, Pusha T. Mm. So the Migos is not the best rap group of all time. Yes, that's debatable. <laughs> that's debatable. I mean, as far as like numbers and whatnot and how the culture shifted, I would say yeah. Because at first, I said no, right? You know, just, you know, growing up, I, I had to throw it to Bootang. But I changed my mind last week after I found out they had did that song with Ric Flair. I said they're the greatest group of all time. Because <laughs> that one video, I don't care what else they did. I don't care about Bad and Bougie. I don't care about Motorsport. They did the video with Ric Flair. They're the greatest group of all time. That's why I, so I put them up there. They've also helped, like, propel the culture in Atlanta. Yeah. You know, Gucci started it off in, like, the 2010 era and whatnot. But they, yeah, they did. Like, the Lemonade and whatnot. But, uh, Migos, they took it to a whole other level as far as, like, commercial success. Yeah. And people failed to realize they got Grammys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, 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 lyrically, yeah, lyrically, they're not, you know, top notch. But there are other influences within the culture. Like, you can feel them today. You know what I'm saying? Their style, right. the way they rap, everything. You know, so you gotta give them their respect. How do y'all, how do y'all feel about six nine? <laughs> um, you know what? He's from, he's, he's from Brooklyn, so you know, I, uh, my, the Brooklyn, my Brooklyn will not allow me. 
<laughs> Sent to go against the grain oh, on this man. one. Um, but no, you know, in all seriousness, no, no, I, I like, I like his music. I'm just not with all of the extra stuff outside of the music right. and all that. Test yeah. my gangster right. and all that yeah, because, first of all, you know. I, I'm I'm a little older. Well, I'm a lot older than him, but I come from an era where we ain't talk about what we was gonna do. If something was gonna happen, it was gonna happen. We have to do a whole movie about it on right. Instagram Thanks. and whatever else. And I'm not with all that. And I'm also not with overly doing this whole gang culture stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's coming from somebody who has family members that's in that type of life. I'm not with that at all. Promoting that because I'm really about uplifting our youth and I don't want them to looking at this like this is what they should be doing you know unless it's if it's about something positive then I, you know what I'm all for it but you just talking about a bunch of a bunch of nonsense so if you stick into the music I like a lot of his songs but outside outside of that I don't like you know how he moves as far as with all that gang and, and text my gangster and, put, and I'm not with all of that yeah I'm not a fan of his at all like me neither yeah I'm not a fan I think a lot of that is corny, but I feel bad for the kid too, because he's a kid, he's young. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And as Tripp mentioned, us being older, like, you maneuver wild on the block, that older head on the block is supposed to pull you to the side, like, yo, what you doing? Right. And so for these dudes, like, even when they was at the breakfast club, the dude Treyway is supposed to be his OG, and he's sitting there co-signing it, like, oh, yeah, nah, yeah. that's how these kids maneuver, like, so it's cool for him to be on IG and basically calling people out and, and trying to bring the drama his way. Like, yeah. where's the cast that's supposed to be in your group, in your group, in your crew? Like, nah, you you moving a little wild right now. Like, chill, mm -hmm. you know. So, the moment he get tested, we gonna know what it is. And we seen it in that video when they was in LA at the airport. <laughs> he, 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 he rolling around on the ground and all yeah. that. Like, it's five, it's, it's you and four of your mans against two dudes, and y'all yeah. get handled out there to the point where y'all gotta run back in the airport. Right. So, yeah. I'm not a fan of dudes. I'm be honest. <laughs> now, I'm gonna bring it back to sneaker ball because. Once again, y'all do got some of the hottest Jordans. So I do want to talk a little bit of basketball with y'all. Uh, well, first of all, in the, in the store right now, who's who's moving more units as far as sneakers go? Jordan. Still, well, I, see, Jordan's like Jay-Z. We're going to take him out of all the categories. As far as who's in the NBA currently. Oh, well, in our store right now, um, we don't sell Kyrie's or any LeBron's, anything like that. We try to stay with the exclusives. Okay. Um, so basketball wise, it's just Jordan. We don't have no PGs, nothing like that. Okay. Um, aside from Jordan, you got you know Kanye West, Yeezys. Yeezys, yeah. Yeezys Those are on fire man. right now. Um, yeah, that, that's about it. You um, have a raw ball. <laughs> you know, yeah, that ain't got the good ball. That's exclusive. Ball. Come on, nah, man. Nah, we gotta nah, get your pair of Zoe twos, man. Nah, nah. Did anybody ever get their shipment of Zoe twos? <laughs> <laughs> Did they send them out? Nah. Like the price of those are too expensive. It's crazy, right? Like for it to be the even if it was less than half the price, they still don't even look good. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, three and a quarter for the slippers. Uh, are they even produced domestically, though? You know yeah. what? I'm I'm I not sure. I don't think they're produced at all anymore. It's probably it's taking them. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, we international got like, shipping fees. My like dad better business bill waiting. He tried to blame it on all people going hate. Like now nah, yeah. you didn't ship the sneakers yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's people who pay money. They ain't got their shipment yet. People are actually bought them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, some people bought them. Yeah. but you know, cool. I'm, I'm just I'm not a big enough baller because you know I'm not with the big baller brand sneakers. They, they not. They just don't look good. I'm sorry. That, they up there with the Steph with the uh, with the Steph Curry's. The, those James Harden boot sneakers that they just came out with, yeah, those the masterpiece sneakers, yeah, and, the, and the Kobe Adidas sneakers. Those are the, the top five worst sneakers of all time. I'll be honest, um, despite who he is, but S Dots was pretty horrible too. Yeah. The, I mean, the Sean Carlos was pretty horrible. Yeah. <laughs> they were going to say a category as a genius. Yeah, genius sneakers. You know. It was that Reebok collab. That yeah, just I don't know. We, like Reebok, I'm not a fan. Tell me, yeah. sign some young cats. Yeah, that's what they what they need to do is is, is bring on more of the, the the younger cats. But I mean, at least for Jay Z, you know, for him they sold out, so he made some money off the sneakers. But anything he puts out is gonna sell out, so it doesn't really right. really matter. As a sneakerhead, we talking about Jordans. What's your favorite signature pair of Jordans? Favorite shoe, yeah. favorite Jordan is the Olive Nines. Olive Nines. I was I had two pair of those. Yeah, I'm actually okay. getting one of my third pair right now. <laughs> I was talking to one of my friends yesterday. 
She said she got a pair she's trying to sell. So um, it's crazy because the second pair I had actually was thrown out by accident. So that kind of hurt me. Mm. But I'm going to get ready to get on my third pair. Um, besides that, I like the uh, the Space Jam nines, the Playoff nines. Yeah. Okay. That's a good shoe. It's my favorite. Um, Black Cement threes, those are classic. Of course. Varsity Red Sixes, those are classic. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's about now, it. I, okay, now, are you one of those guys that when all the new exclusive stuff comes out, you take the pair for yourself and then you be like, tell the customers, yo, we don't got these no more. Nah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I, cause listen, I mean, that's what I'd be doing if I was at the sneaker store. Well, he don't have different sizes. He just, you know. Nah, I don't want nobody wearing these. These just came out. I want to be the only ones wearing these sneakers right here. Yeah, I, 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 I give it a while. <laughs> I do. I mean, so that's the, that's like one of the perks of working in a sneaker store, actually running a sneaker store. That's one of the perks, but I give it a while. I'm saying before I actually purchase something, I try to let the customer get it first. I know I'm gonna find it eventually. Yeah. Cause I'm I'm into the culture, so I'm gonna find okay. I'm gonna find somebody that's gonna sell it. And I got a son; he's three years old, so I try to keep him into it too. So I'm more focused on how I could get my son involved in the culture too nowadays. That's, it's easier to get the kid sizes. Not really. Like I'm not sure if you know those um those sneakers Air Max 197 Sean Witherspoons. Okay. Have you ever heard? Are you familiar with those? But, uh, it's a sneaker that just came out last week. Hard to get. How much yeah. are they? Well, kids, they was one hundred, but on the resale oh, yeah, market, yeah, 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 they, they go for it. Yeah. Um, the highest price is four hundred dollars right now for a baby. I shoe. mean, sneakers are a big business for, online. For a baby I mean, you can turn around sneakers for a nice little profit. For yeah. the resale business, actually, is worth over a billion dollars. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of young kids making big money. I have a I have a friend that um. I can shout him out. Shout out my man Jay Tips. Um, he he he's been reselling since we left our last job, 2010. Hasn't had a real job since. Provided for his family, doing his thing. So it's, it's money in the resale business. Yeah. I'm gonna look, look down on it. I need to start. <laughs> 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 I need to look down on it. I'm gonna need to rethink some things. <laughs> This is, this is a tough question for you right here because I know, like you say, you've been a sneakerhead all your life. Mm -hmm. So what happens at that moment when your son reaches the same size as you and you find him <laughs> in the closet, <laughs> he in the closet looking at, you know, some vintage joints that's yeah. in there? That's the thing. You got to move out at that point? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'll share them with him. So the thing with that is I'm, I, I'm into sneakers, but I'm not, one, into, I'm not one of those sneakerheads that for like, oh, let me not wear these until a few months later, like, I feel like if I'm a buy it, I'm going to wear it. Absolutely. Yeah, right there. Absolutely. Like, I'm not too stuck on keeping it on ice or buying two pairs, one to rock, one to stock. If I buy it, I'm going to wear it when I feel like I want to wear it. Yeah. I'd rather see it on my feet. My son, that's the closest person to me. You want to wear them? That's what I'm saying. What if them Isle of Nines are sitting in And they get scuffed. Through. They get scuffed. <laughs> 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 we got caught. Yeah, another pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another pair. Ladies to the school dance, right? It's cool. I get another pair. Where's the man on the field when they get on the field? Was it it's Kirkland cool. when they stepped on the Jordans? Oh, uh, yeah. Spike yeah. Lee Jordan. Like that. He come back with those smudges. Uh, oh, man. It's oh, only for the real ones. You know, see that's really, really rare. But nowadays, like, what's really, really, what's really rare? Yeah. Yeah. releases, yeah. Everything is accessible now. Days. Um, so yeah, the cycle is yeah. crazy how sneakers come back around right, right now. Especially Jordans. It's like. not the same what it used to be. But you still got your OGs and your classics, but it's everything's accessible nowadays. Yeah. People who never thought about being sneakerheads are sneakerheads. Facts. Yeah, it's, it's it's definitely one of the most popular trends right now. Just the, having that collection, I know in, in the NBA they they have the their competition amongst the players of who got the best sneaker collection. So, but that's why it's always good to have a friend that works at the sneaker store. So you know, my my friends work at sneaker bar at the Bronx. Yeah. Just letting y'all know right now, y'all might need to to pop in on them and uh, and see what they got up at the store, man, because they definitely have some some stuff. And now, do y'all have the shirts in the store right now? No, we're working on that. I'm okay. working on that. We want to um, come up with some new designs, some different colorways before we bring Have a couple different to pieces store. together and we're then... Right. Yeah, okay. that's actually what we're working on right now. Yeah. Like I was saying, though, um, like right now we got hoodies. It's only one base color, black. Okay. But we have three different faces on it. Um, Andy Warhol, Basquiat, nice. and Albert Einstein. Right now, me and the guy on the Basquiat yeah. ones. Nice. And that's still actually the ones we got for y'all today, too, the that's Basquiat sound, ones. Sound good to me. I'll listen, I like Basquiat, man, you know? Yeah. Hope talk about Basquiat all the time. I need to get <laughs> <Sure. you> out <laughs> 
So that sounds definitely going. Um, once again, though, uh, Sneaker Bar, if you guys are just tuning in, they have teamed up with, with Real Fans Real Talk to help out with the Ballin' for Peace first ever dunk contest. We showed you guys the video a little bit earlier in the show of some of the guys that will be competing in this year's dunk contest. And uh, they will be donating a $150 gift card to Sneaker Bar. Uh, so all you got to do is you get your card at the event. These guys are going to pull up to Ballin' for Peace. You get your gift card. You come to the store in the Bronx. And you go shopping, man. That's 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 basically what it is. See what you want in there, um, and that's it, man. They like I said, they got they got what you need. That's all I'm gonna say. They got what you need up in there. And maybe by the time y'all get there, they might have the hoodies in, so you might be able to get you a sneaker Definitely. and a hoodie to go with it. Uh, it's, we so we're speaking it into existence, man. Yeah. Actually, we might we might we might have some merch at the event. See, so come on, man. Yeah, see what it is. Some exclusive, right? Exactly. At the event, right? Yeah. So now you know what you got to come, what sneaker to come get once you get. Come on, man. See what we bring it, y'all, man. It's, come on, man. Real fans, real talk, man. Who's out here doing it like us? Big, big, big shout out to Sneaker Ball. We definitely uh, appreciate you guys stepping in and yeah, and just doing your part to make you know this uh, charity event that much better because I you know I, I spoke to Ron a couple of days ago he already got the trophies ready for the for the winners of the dunk contest so it's definitely it's going down and from the looks of things there's definitely some high flyers uh, that's going to be a part of this thing so it's going to be crazy Statman even said he was coming out of retirement he said you had the 360 behind the back turn around <laughs> loop de loop off the arches off Grimace's head nothing but net <laughs> And the, the, you forgot the between the legs part. Damn, my oh, bad. Shit. I'm sorry. Never, never seen before. <laughs> 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 right, right, right. Listen, Listen, I'm trying to pick you up. I'm trying to pick you up, man. I want the people to know how you get down, man. That's why I'm, I'm telling you that. That's why that man not not drinking with us tonight because he's getting in game shape for Ball of for Peace. It's going down April 21st at Elm Court Recreational Center. Born for Peace Celebrity Charity Basketball Game. Uh, so many, so many good people's gonna be there. Uh, no Murder Mook is gonna be in the building. Uh, Mr. Commodore is gonna be in the building. Uh, Fat Boy is Fat gonna, be, gonna in be in the building. Uh, Shiggy is gonna be in the building. Yandy is gonna be in the building. Uh, who's it? Uh, a couple, it's a couple of hitters is I gonna be in there. Jacquey is gonna be in there. Yeah. yeah, she's supposed to be there. So it's gonna Sophia be. Body's Sophia Body's Body is gonna is gonna be there. Graf yeah, is gonna be crazy. there. It's a big uh, bowling event back in November that you know we had the mm -hmm. privilege of being. That was crazy. It was star studded. So yeah, and this is an even bigger event for for Haran yeah. Basketball is, is always the the biggest event that that Haran has every year. Graf's gonna be in the building. You said Graf. Mm -hmm. So the dope gang will be there. It's gonna be some hitters. Um. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one, man. This shit is it's it, you know it's going down at Bowling for Peace. So make sure you know that you guys get those tickets and, and pull up. And again, you know y'all chop it up. Y'all can chop it up with the guys from Sneaker Bar there as well. Even if you're not in the dunk contest, you still want to get these guys info. Hit up that store in, in the Bronx and uh, go get yourself right, man. Guess the summertime is coming. You need to get fly anyway, right, okay? Yeah. They got what you need in the yeah. store. You need a new hat, they got it. You need a shirt, they got it. You need some new jeans, they got it. You can't just be running around with plain white tees no more, man. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's over yeah, for that. <laughs> that, was, that was a long time ago. You just can't be doing that all summer, man. Exactly. <laughs> I want to get you guys pick your guys pick for the NBA Finals since we're before we wrap things up. Mm. So I don't. Let me see. We end uh, up for another drink. Face to face team, like the team face offs or yeah, the actual we will be there. East, west, and then the winner. Make sure you follow Leanne on Instagram too. Love the real girl. Could y'all put her Instagram up on the screen, please? Love Jordan. She's the real girl. There, there you go. go. The real girl. to change it to g because the greatest bartender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you got to throw the caps in there. Man. You got to throw caps in it. I would say Celtics, too. Thunder. Well, I know no Kyrie Irving anymore, so. Yeah, yeah but the they, they, they had a couple of games during the season, you know, where they didn't meet Kyrie, you know. It's during the season. You're talking about the series. Okay, yeah. hey, that's the man's pick, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, to talk about I feel like, I feel like <laughs> Kyrie going to he gonna find it and he you know put together. It could be like the six man where the ghost of Kyrie comes back oh, and then helps the Celtics <laughs> get to the finals. They got to the finals. They gotta go through the Cavs and and Toronto. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough one. It wouldn't be easy, but I mean, I say Cavs Warriors. 
It's doable. Bro. We done seen some crazy things. Yeah, that's what you never know. You know, the team get hot. Brad Stevens is a great coach. Maybe he comes up with yeah. the game plan. Yeah, no, that's yeah. not that's not that. <laughs> 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 Who you got? Well, in the finals, uh, I mean, right now, it, dep it depends right now because I don't know how Golden State is going to do without Steph. So I'm not 100% sure that the Golden, that the Warriors will be in the finals. Um, if it's not the the Warriors, if they just say they go out in the second round because for some reason Steph misses the second round of mm. the playoffs, um, I'm, I would say either OKC or Houston will come out of the West and play Cleveland. Um, like I don't think there's anybody in the East that's going to stop Cleveland from making it to the finals. And, I mean, depending on what kind of series that you get from the the – the rest of the role players in Cleveland, I think they could be OKC. I think Houston would be a lot tougher for them. But I still, you know, I don't know right now that James Harden is coming to play in the playoffs because I haven't seen it yet. One and two, I don't know if Chris Paul will hang around long enough to for Houston to really do what I believe they can do if they go throughout the playoffs being healthy. In which, mm -hmm. I, in which case, I would give OKC the best chance because I think as far as health-wise goes, they probably would be the healthiest of the of the top teams. I think they could actually do it. But if Chris Paul is healthy and James Harden plays well, I'll go Houston, Cleveland in the finals. I can well, see that. It would be good to see Houston win just because of the fact that you know CP3 and Harden will both get a chip finally. But yeah, I'm not with that either. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen we've seen the Warriors and the Cavs win already. We want to see something. That's good. We need to let, let the King get another one. <laughs> that about, but, uh, if the Warriors stay healthy. I don't think the you know LeBron's gonna get another one. I can't call him the King, but you know whatever. Re really quick, fellas, uh, give me your, your Instagrams. My Instagram is the real Nuve. Nuve is spelled N U V E. Again, Trevor T R B L E. So the Instagram is gonna be at I T S T R B L E followed by underscore. Oh, mine is underscore underscore little Cam L I T T. L E C A M underscore underscore. And y'all know Sneaker Ball is at Sneaker Ball, so make sure y'all hit them up on IG. Stop by that store in the Bronx. Give me the address one more time. 762 East 149th Street between Concord and Wells, the heart of South Bronx. Go get go get flower uh, really quick. Uh, shout out to Soundview Liquors and shout out to uh, the other 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 Eric Eric Michaels who uh, he uh, designed the t shirts for the uh, Real Fans Real Talk 2K tournament. Stop by some earlier. Send us, send us back with a little, with a little joint up here. So I turned my rocket uh, for today's show. So big shout out to him and uh, shout out to Ladybug. We we'll see, we we'll see you guys uh, next week. For myself, Mark the Step Man, Skevich, Eric Sanchez, the whole Sneaker Ball family, and of course, Lee the Goat, the best mm. bartender of all time. All right. We will see you guys next week. It's like fans, we shit to Manhattan I'm getting all my stats from my bro, Mark the Stats, man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan And if the brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, gossip, all the hot topics Real fans, real talk.com, got it Take us out as bloggers Jeremy Leonard We'll log into the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the archives, even tell a neighbor Tell him Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tune in and be the only thing on your agenda It's certified proof, son You know what I'm about, son Real fans, real talk.com I'm out, bro Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk.com Real fans, real talk.com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk.com Real fans, real talk.com